He's a former NFL player, a giant, um, and he says the doctors should stop giving NFL players opioids and instead give them cannabis, marijuana, because CBD. it's you're not, you're not getting addicted the way you are in opioids. How, how do you see all well, this? Well, I, I think that's uh, a valid point. And, uh, the medicinal use is one thing, but when it moves over to the recreational, that's a whole different ball of wax. Do you think we will get to the place where all 50 states will legalize recreational use of marijuana in light of the fact that some of the medical reports are saying this may not be a great idea for recreational use? Medicinal? Absolutely. But recreational? Not sure. I, I think medical is going to lead the way. I think recreational and states where it's legal, or, or states that have already done it, it's going to happen. But I think you're going to see largely medical at the federal level. And I think what you're going to see is a bill that I helped work on with Senator Gardner's staff is the States Act, which is moving through the House right now. The States Act actually does exactly what harkens back to some of the foundational principles of states' rights. Yeah. Meaning, if, it's, if you want medical in Florida, have medical in Florida. If you want medical and recreational in California, have that in California, but if you don't want it at all in Alabama, or if you don't want it at all in Nebraska, then you don't have to have it. And I think that's a responsible way of addressing this as we continue to move down the road. But a, a, a you know a once and for all recreational happening in the next five years, I don't I don't see you that don't happening. See yeah. But I see a thriving medical market, and I see a thriving CBD market, the likes of which I don't think the world is even necessarily ready for. Because when you're talking about CBD products being sold in national drugstores, yeah, like CVS, which is it's doing that, yeah. and Walgreens. Yeah. So if you want the younger vote as well. In 2020, Gen, right. Gen X, Millennials, Gen Z, they're all on board with legalizing marijuana. In fact, like Quinnipiac poll says that 93% of Americans, whether you're a baby boomer, younger generation, if, you, if it's prescribed by a doctor, they want medical marijuana, CBD, legalized. So yeah. that's, you know, there's, there is definitely, I would say there's uh, tailwinds helping that cause. Well, look at Senate President Mitch McConnell just wrote an op-ed in a Kentucky paper saying that one of his number one legislative priorities was the passage of the Farm Bill, which includes included hemp and CBD. That's a big moment when you talk about the Senate President of the United States saying, and he actually appointed himself to the conference committee to make sure that it got through. That's a big deal, and I think that just shows, but you got to look at, when I'm looking at investing, you got to look at who can scale up. Look what happened in Canada. Everyone scaled up. They had about a 10-year head start, millions of square feet of cultivation. They went recreational. They were out of product in week one. But not everyone's wow. allowed to invest in marijuana. Like, for instance, you know, we have uh, state funds, pension funds, Fidelity and Vanguards. You know, they're very clean, proper, and they probably wouldn't want to touch sin stocks, which is what marijuana is considered. Now, until, until we get the Safe Banking Act across the line, the biggest issue is right now, without the Safe Banking Act, if a bank takes cannabis money, or, and, and writes a, you write a check, they have to file, if I had to pay an electrician to work on a grow facility, they have to file a suspicious activity report every single time. I was, was going to ask you, wow. it, absent this national legislation, is that a real big impediment to, because of the banking issue? It's absolutely huge. I mean, imagine running payroll when you're in, yeah. in a cash business. And, and if you look at it from a perspective of a governmental standpoint, you talk to folks at Treasury, they want to bank it because now they can figure out how big the market actually is and then ultimately look and see tax. if they can put a federal tax on it. Right. You have to look at it from law enforcement. What's the easiest way to trace crime if it's in the bank and you can trace the money transfers? So I know it's been kind of plug your ears and hope no one yells loud enough. It's been the, the congressional model so far, but it's gotten too loud. And you have people getting killed. Dispensary workers trying to earn a living to pay their families' wages or to pay... So I agree that the momentum for marijuana stocks is coming in and I would highly recommend, I've been posting videos uh, where I've been against marijuana stocks and I've been staying away, but it's time to change, especially now that you got conservatives and Fox News also supporting it. Um, I'm not going to put a large part of my portfo uh, portfolio into marijuana, but I'm going to definitely begin to buy in 2019. Uh, kind of dollar cost average and just have maybe five or ten percent of uh, the new purchases that I make for 2019 and 20. Um, I'll, I'll be looking at marijuana as definitely a sector I want to have some sort of exposure but let me know your thoughts on this and what you guys think and I will talk to you guys soon.